Okay, so in this video, I wanted to tackle a topic that I've been meaning to do for a long time. And I, there's a lot of misconception about, you know, look, when I first started getting into all this stuff, it was confusing. And I didn't know what I wanted, but I knew it was different than what I had. And I knew it was in the base. I knew the base was missing. And, this, and I'm talking long before I started this channel. I knew that I wanted to hear down to 20 hertz. I, I knew that. I knew I wanted to hear all the way in the frequency zone, um, which is, you know, audible human hearing limits is around 20 hertz on the low end. Uh, and so I, I knew I wanted to hear the, all of the sound. So I set out and, and looked and looked and researched. And by the way, forums, forums give me a headache. Um, and I'm not trying to be down on forums. I'm not. They're very, very useful. But man, some of the fights and the arguments that people get into is just so tiring. And that's another reason I started this channel because it's just so exhausting. And, and I had already done all this research and I didn't want it to go to waste. So I thought, start a YouTube channel. So anyway, that, that's some background on that. But, um, and, and some of these things that I'm gonna talk about, I learned you know, long after I started this channel. And part of that is there's a difference between going deep and sounding deep. And this is a really hard one to wrap your brain around. Um, and I know because I went through it. I found this out in comparing sealed with, with ported. People say if you want deep bass, you go with sealed because they'll extend all the way down to 10 hertz. True, very true, I measured it. It absolutely extends all the way down to 10 hertz or 11 hertz or whatever, depending on the sub, of course, and all that. But what was weird to me is that I compared a, a, an SB2000 sealed sub to a PB1000 ported sub. And the PB1000 is rated to 19 hertz, um, which is pretty accurate. And then the uh, SB2000, it went all the way down to 11 hertz that I measured in room. I measured it, I'm not guessing, I measured it. So it went deeper. Thing is, the PB1000 sounded deeper, even though it basically fell off at 19 hertz, where the other sub went all the way down to 11 hertz, the PB2000, or PB1000 just still sounded much deeper. And the reason is because it had more output on the bottom end, you know, in relation to the, to the higher end bass. And so it got, it gets a little bit louder as it goes deeper. Whereas the SB2000 was more of, a, of you know, like just flat, flat. And so it didn't get a little bit louder as it went deeper. It stayed about the same. The problem is the human ear, it's a little bit harder to hear that deep bass. And so the subs I talk about, the subs that are on the list, the reason I have that list, the reason I like the subs that I do is because they get a little bit louder in room. And it makes it seem as though the bass is completely even because your, your hearing starts to not be as good in the lower bass range. So you need a, a sub that will actually elevate that bass and kind of accentuate that lower end of bass, but without overdoing it. And that's another trick. Um, so there's this razor's edge of bass that I like that just keeps continually getting a little bit louder as it goes deeper, the deeper it goes. So that's what I'm trying to, to point out is that just because a sub goes deeper doesn't mean it's going to sound deeper. It doesn't mean that your overall satisfaction with the sub is going to be better because, well, this sub only goes to 17 hertz while this sub goes all the way down to 12. And that doesn't tell me squat. I want to know how it measures in room. What does it sound like? Does it give me that sense of bottomless bass or does it taper off a little bit according to my ears? And this is the hard part. You can get a flat frequency response measured by rooming cue wizard. Okay. And by all accounts, it's completely flat, but to my ears, it's tapering off because the natural response is that bass is a little bit harder to hear. So that increased output as you go lower, that is the magic. That is the stuff that I like. And that's to me what delivers a truly satisfying bass experience. Um, and so I just wanted to touch on this because there's some, you know, some people will measure subs and they'll be like, this is weird. I expected, you know, the SVS sub to go deeper than this other sub, you know, and the reality is, you know, the SVS sub may taper off sooner uh, for one reason or another, but it tends to be below your audible hearing. Me personally, I can hear down to about 17 hertz. Below that, I can't hear anything else. And 
I've had subs that go lower. It, it doesn't really add that much for me personally. Um, some people really like it. I'm not downing them, but um, but that's one of those things. And so you, but you get this this confusion when you talk about well, you get a sub that, that goes deeper. This sub goes down to 15 hertz, and yet this sub that goes down to 19 hertz, like the PB1000, just sounds deeper. It just has a deeper presentation. A depth of presentation is something I always talk about. And so that's what I'm always talking about. When I talk about depth of presentation, I'm talking about the fact that it sounds deeper. It doesn't just go deeper, because you can have a sub that goes all the way down to eight hertz, okay, let's say, well out of my hearing range, but it may still sound shallow. Okay, um, that's normal. <laughs> normal subs to me sound shallow. Um, whereas the subs on the list, they have a deeper sound, a deeper presentation. And even on that list, there are subs that have a deeper presentation over other subs. And so it really, it, it's, it's your ears are gonna tell you. Your ears tell a tale. Um, and also, by having that deeper presentation, you know, some people say, well, it's, you know, um, you know, I like SVS subs, so they'll say, well, SVS doesn't do very good in the mid-range, you know, in the mid-bass. Well, my response to that is, turn up the gain. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big issue with SVS subs, is people don't turn the gain up high enough to match that same, you know, 50 to 70 hertz frequency that they're normally integrating their subs at. And, you know, and this is kind of getting, I did a thing on, uh, what's it called, uh, base myths. So top 10 base myths. Um, and essentially, when you have a sub like these that get a little bit louder as they go deeper, most subs are really loud at you know 50 to 70 hertz and then trail off. Well, if you integrate them to where they're both at the same level at 60 to 70 hertz, as you, know, you, you turn up the SVS to where it's just gonna be just as loud as your other sub at 70 hertz, that means you got a whole world of deep bass that you were never getting before. And the impact and everything is just far greater. Um, and, and to do that, I, I have a, a video called uh, Adjusting Subs by Ear um, in, in my bass hack series. My bass hack series, if you haven't checked it out, check it out. Um, even if you think it won't apply, sometimes it might. But uh, anyway, that's just something I wanted to talk about was the difference between going deeper and sounding deeper. Uh, it really does make a difference. And when you hear it, there's no question. So, um, and again, you know, if you have an SVS sub and it's like, well, it's kind of quiet, well, just turn up the gain, you know? <laughs> you can run more bass when it's like that because it doesn't get boomy in the high end. Um, you know, granted, you can have it overdone. You can turn these subs up too much where it just sounds way too overdone. That, that, that's just like any other, any other subwoofer, that happens. But um, you can run these with, considerably more gain than you can a, a typical subwoofer um, that is has more output at say 60 to 70 hertz and less output in the 20 hertz range. These have more output in room and in the 20 to 30 hertz range than they do in the 50 to 70 hertz range. And so when you match that up and you turn up the gain, you just get gobs of low end output and that's awesome. Um, and, it, and again, to me, it sounds flat. It sounds completely flat. Um, so it's just an interesting phenomenon, but anyway, hopefully that helps understand the differences between subs that sound deep and subs that go deep. It's a major difference. It's, you know, and there are subs, of course, that sound deep and go deep as well. That, that's a hundred percent true. I don't mean to imply that that's not the case. Um, but it's one of those things that can be confusing and it's hard to wrap your brain around when you're shopping for subs and you're looking for, you're trying to make decisions based on specs alone, which is just a nightmare. Oh, and my favorite, people making judgments on max SPL. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the wrong, if you're making a judgment on a subwoofer based on its max SPL, it's a losing game as far as I'm concerned. I've, I've heard subs that are, have a max SPL that's like 10 dB higher and I preferred the sub that had a lower max SPL. It's because that sub sounded deeper and I was able to get more at sub without it sounding boomy. So anyway, it's kind of involved, but that gives you an idea of what I'm talking about when I talk about a sub sounding deeper versus going deeper. So anyway, hopefully that helped out. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, if you haven't checked out the best subwoofers list, uh, it, it kind of goes into more detail about all this. Uh, I have graphs on there and things like that. Um, and 
again, I, I appreciate your support, and let me know uh, what you guys think of this down in the comments below, uh, and let me know if there's other videos that you want me to cover as far as topics and things like that. Uh, so again, thanks so much for watching, and please subscribe. Dig up those weeds. Good girl. What are you doing? Into it. And your dog. Roll over. Angel. Roll over. Angel. Roll over. There she is. Roll over. Come on. There you go. That girl. Hmm. Oh, upside down, doggy. Upside down, doggy.